Un- unfortunately, because of our cultural aversion to everything fat, we that has translated to an aversion to or even a, a hatred of our fat cells. And the reality is it, they're not there by accident and they're not there to hurt us. Uh, there are, in fact, diseases uh, of people who have a genetic inability to make fat cells, and they are they are exceptionally lean. I mean, they are ripped, as you might say. I mean, they are incredibly lean, and they're incredibly sick. They end up getting fatty tissue, fatty liver, fat storage in their muscle and bones, and they develop all kinds of diseases. So let me just – that's my weird way of introducing the fact that fat cells are essential. We need them, um, but – wouldn't you know it nowadays they've they've gone too far and so the fat cell is a, a cell that is on the surface designed to store energy so if there's an excess and the body has been signaled to store energy and those are not the same thing so there's there's energy to store and the fat cells are being told to store it then the fat cells will store energy for later use but beyond the simple metabolic aspect which we both know is the one most people are interested in is the fact that fat cells are also a very prominent part of the endocrine system within the body. They release a myriad of hormones that do all kinds of things um, for the better, for metabolically uh, beneficial and, and not, and not only beneficial to metabolism, like regulating appetite, but also regulating things as fundamental as fertility and reproduction. People don't appreciate that aspect of the fat cell. So uh, in my mind, the fat cell has been given a bad rap. Um, and I say that as a fat cell scientist, uh, but at the same time, of course, it is at the center of so many of the cardiometabolic and chronic disease problems that we suffer from today that we didn't suffer from in previous generations. These so-called plagues of prosperity really can be, uh, if you drill down, um, you, you find the the fat cell at the at the base of so many of these issues. We call one of these depots white adipose tissue, and the other we can call brown adipose tissue. It is, in fact, because of a difference in color. One of the things we do in my lab is do fat biopsies from humans from around their belly, and we'll take out a little piece of fat from the belly, and it is very whitish, a little yellowish, and it's because it is primarily just fat. In a fat cell, the it is almost entirely made up of a big drop of fat, like a bubble of fat. And it looks a little bit like, like Crisco almost, you know, not quite as pristine, but, or like coconut oil. Maybe I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, so, so that is white fat. And, and it's white again because of the incredible amount of fat you can't see that, that is in those fat cells. And you can't really see anything else about the cells. In contrast, brown adipose tissue is, has, has small drops of fat within its cell. But it also has a very high preponderance of mitochondria. In mitochondria, the so-called powerhouse of the cell that everyone remembers from biology, from high school biology, the mitochondria are, are in fact a reddish, kind of brownish, darkly complected color. And the fat tissue that, that is so enriched with those mitochondria reflects that tissue. I mean, it literally reflects the light, I should say. And so it looks much more kind of reddish brown. And that not only do we see that stark difference in appearance, I mean, it actually looks more in color like muscle in, in color than it does other fat tissue. But, but with that um, difference in appearance is a profound difference in metabolism. Uh, and this kind of reflects the fact that white adipose tissue does indeed store fat very well. It's no surprise that white fat cells have a very low metabolic rate. Of all the cell types we've tested in my lab measuring metabolic rate in tissues, fat has by far the lowest. And then when you when we measure the metabolic rate of the brown adipose tissue cells, they are about 10 times higher. Uh, it, its metabolic rate is about 10 times higher. In fact, it's it's in the same range as muscle cells. 